53. We left off, or we're picking, picking up, let me put it that way. We left off with Oedipus accusing Tiresias of plotting to kill Lias, blame it on, essentially, place the blame on Oedipus. And Oedipus said, 395, you did the work, yes, short of killing him with your own hands, given eyes, I'd say you did the killing single-handed. That is, if you hadn't been blind, you would have done it yourself. Tiresias. Is that so? Okay, so what is Oedipus just accused him of? Killing lions. How do you expect Tiresias to respond to that? Do you expect him to say, well, no, Oedipus, that's just not very nice. I mean, here I am, faithfully served the people of Thebes all these years. No, he replies how? He replies kind of in kind. That is, he replies with a little bit of anger. Is that so? I charge you then, submit to that decree you just laid down. What was the decree he just laid down? If you know who the murderer was and you don't tell me, you're going to be banished for life. If you are the murderer, then let all this crap, you know, fall down on you. From this day onward, speak to no one, not these citizens, not myself. Why? You are the curse, the corruption. You shit. I can't believe you would say that, Oedipus. You think you can get away with this? I have already. The truth with all its powers lives inside me. Why? He's a prophet. What does it mean to be a prophet? Does it mean you see the future? No, it's two things. I keep misplacing my mark. A prophet is a foreteller and a fourth teller. This one deals with truth. This one deals with the future. Okay? And guess what? In order to be a real prophet, let's, you know, at least from the, the Old Testament biblical understanding of a prophet, how often do you have to be right? All the time. You can never be wrong. Never. So if you issue a thousand and one prophecies, the thousand and one have got to be correct. It's, you're not graded on a curve, you know. Okay. So if Tiresias had ever been wrong in the past, they would not recall him. They would not call him a prophet. And that's because within Greek literature, Tiresias has never been wrong. Every time he utters some kind of prophecy, he's right. Why? Because he has a direct line to Apollo, supposedly. You know, he's got Apollo on speed dial. So, who primed you for this? What does it mean, prime? Like when you prime a pump? That means you fill it with fluid so that, and then you pump it so that it has a vacuum and starts the sucking motion. Okay? So, who primed you? Who put you up to this? It, it couldn't have been you. You did. <laughs> you put me up to this. Why? You forced me to come. You forced me to tell. Say it again so I understand it better. This is like, you know, being in a court of law or a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, hearing and somebody asked you the same question a hundred different times. Say it again so I'm really sure I'm clear about this. You didn't understand me? Or are you tempting me to talk? No, no, I can't say that I, I understood it. Out with it. And you almost want to see Tiresias go, okay, read my lips and I'll speak very slowly. I say you are the murderer you hunt. Got it? Clear enough? Twice. Shall I say more? In other words, do you, you really want to rage? Because I can add to that. No, go ahead. You cannot imagine, I tell you, you and your loved ones live together in infamy. You cannot see how far you've gone in guilt. Notice, you cannot see. Okay. What is Tiresias alluding to? 
which will come out short. No. Well, maybe. Does it have anything to do with Lysa's murder? It's an offshoot of that. It's a, a corollary effect, a consequence of, of the murder. Okay? Let's, um, let's kind of jump to the end for a moment. Here's Oedipus. Over here, put his bio parents. And over here, put his adoptive parents. Who are his biological parents? Oh, I can't put this over here. Laius and Yocasta, adoptive parents. Polybus and Merope. What has he had with Yocasta? Relations, okay? It's a nice, benign way of putting it. And multiple children. Two daughters and several sons. Okay? That is what Tiresias is referring to. You, you can't even imagine. When I bring to light what you've done, your name, and everybody's going to go, you, that's disgusting. I tell you, you and your loved ones live together in infamy. You think you can get away with this? It does, but not for you. Tiresias says, yeah, truth has any power. You've lost your power, stone blind, stone deaf, senses, eyes, blind as stone. So now he accuses Tiresias of what? You're wrong. That's a pretty dangerous charge to level to a guy Who's always been right? Tiresias. I pity you. Flinging insult, flinging at me the very insults each man here will fling at you so soon. This is an example of foretelling. He's telling the future. Why? At the end of the play, what is Oedipus? Blind. He takes the pins on Jocasta's gown big long stick pins and he gouges his eyes out so that when he comes back out of the palace because nobody sees that happen when he comes back out of the palace they see blood and gore and stuff oozing down his face okay he says you're leveling insults at me that everybody's going to say about you in just a few moments Oedipus blind lost in the night endless night that nursed you you can't hurt me or anyone else who sees the light you can I'm so far above you. Terry says, whatever. <laughs> and then Oedipus reaches for another. What? Somebody to blame. Earlier he asked, who put you up to this? And it seems that while he and Tiresias are talking, he's trying to figure out who could have done this. And he jumps at Crayon. Why? Well, Crayon was the one who told Tiresias to come. He says, Crayon. It's not Crayon. Okay? So, turn the page. And now listen to what Oedipus says about Tiresias. When we first heard Oedipus mention Tiresias, what does he call him? Savior of the people. Now, come here, line 443, you pious fraud. Tell me, when did you ever prove yourself a prophet? When the Sphinx, that chanting fury, kept her death watch here. Why silent there? Why not a word? Why did you solve the riddle of the Sphinx? He doesn't say I'm a riddle solver. <laughs> he says I'm a fortune teller or a truth teller, a prophet. There was a riddle, not for some passerby to solve it, cried out for a prophet. Where were you then? Okay. He said, no, but I came. I stopped the Sphinx. The leader. Notice what the leader tries to do here. 
If we were reading Antigone, we'd see the leader in that play tends to do the same thing. He spoke in anger, Lord. What's the leader attempting to do? Reconcile the two of them. You know, maybe he didn't really mean it. Oedipus, yours too. And it isn't what we need. In other words, calm down, both of you. Can we lower the level of argument here? Lower the rhetoric, as we would say in 2018. The best solution to the oracle, the riddle posed by God. We should look for that. We should look for the answer to the riddle. Oedipus is a riddle master, right? Why can't he solve it? Tiresias, you're the king, that is right, you're the one in charge, but in one respect, I'm your equal, the right to reply. Why? What Tiresias means by that is, I am a full citizen as well. You can't just tell me to shut up. I claim that privilege too. I am not your slave. I serve Apollo. I don't need Crayon to speak for me in public. So, you want you mock my blindness? Really? That's what you're reduced to, Oedipus? Fine. Now let me tell you this. You, with your precious eyes, you're blind to the corruption of your life. To the house you live in, those you live with, who are your parents? Why is he asking that? Oedipus thinks he knows who his parents are. So, why does he throw that out? Do you know? All in knowing you are the scourge of your own flesh and blood, the dead below the earth, and the living you're above. The double lash of your mother and your father's curse will whip you from this land one day. Have we heard anything about a curse for Oedipus so far? About his mother's and his father's curse. Now, that could mean, you could interpret that to mean, his mother's curse on him, like, damn you, Oedipus, or his father's curse on him, like damn you, Oedipus. Or could it mean the curse on your mother and father for bringing you into the world? It will whip you from this land one day, your footfall treading you down in terror, darkness shrouding. Soon you'll scream aloud. What haven won't reverberate? In other words, and you'll try to find a safe haven, and people will go, ew, no. What rock of Kitharon won't scream back in echo? And you've got a gloss. The mountains where Oedipus was abandoned as, as an infant. But we don't know Oedipus was abandoned as an infant yet. We, the audience, now, Sophocles' audience did. The day you learned the truth about your marriage, the wedding march that sang you into your halls, the lusty voyage home to the fatal harbor, and a load of other horrors you never dream will level you with yourself and all your children. Will level you with yourself and all your children. Why? Because a parent should be above his or her children. Why is it going to level him with his children? What, as we come to find out, what is, yeah. He's half brother to his children. Okay. Enough. Get out. Vanish. I, I wouldn't have come, but you told me to. Absurd? Am I to you, not to your parents? The ones who bore you found me sane enough. Where do you think the prophecy came to? Or through whom did the prophecy come to Laius and Yocasta? that you were fated to give birth to the one who will sleep with you and bear children by you, and you will be the father of one who will kill you. It came through Tiresias, is what we're led to infer. Oedipus, parents, wait. Who is my father? Well, why does he ask that when he knows Paulus is his father? Hmm. This day will bring you birth and your destruction. Riddle 
riddles. All you can say are riddles. Murk and darkness. Yeah, but Oedipus is a riddle master, so he should be able to solve it, right? Aren't you the best man alive at solving riddles? So notice how Tiresias throws that back in his face. Mock me for that? Go on, you'll reveal my greatness. Your great good fortune, it was your ruin. Not if I saved the city, what do I care? In other words, it was a good thing that I could solve the riddle of the Sphinx. Why? There are fewer dead Thebans. Okay, see ya. <laughs> take me on, boy. Yes, take him away. You're a nuisance. You're out of the way. The irritation's gone. But before he goes, Tiresias gets a last word in. He says, listen to me closely. One, uh, 510. The man you've sought so long, proclaiming, cursing, up and down, the murderer of Lias, he is here. A stranger, you may think, who lives among you, who he soon will be revealed a native Theban. But he will take no joy in the revelation. Blind, who now has eyes, beggar, who now is rich, he will grope his way toward a foreign soil, a stick tapping before him step by step. Why a foreign soil? Because the play that Oedipus dies in is titled Oedipus at Colonus. He's left Thebes. He's in a foreign land. Oedipus goes in the palace. Notice, he doesn't hear these last lines. Revealed at last, brother and father both, to the children he embraces, to his mother, son, and husband both, he sowed the loins his father sowed. He spilled his father's blood. Now, go ahead and reflect on that. Solve that riddle if you're so good. And if I lied, from this day on we'll call the prophet blind. Chorus then responds, Who is the man the voice of God denounces resounding out of the rocky gorge of Delphi? Who is the voice of the God from Delphi denouncing? What that means is, who's the murderer? Who is it really? The horror too dark to tell whose ruthless bloody hands have done the work, etc., etc. So, 550. They turn from the unknown to, okay, now let's talk about Tiresias. The skilled prophet scans the bird, shatters me with terror. I can't accept him, can't deny him, don't know what to say. Can't accept him. I can't believe that it's Oedipus, but I can't deny Tiresias has always been right before. I'm lost. Okay. I cannot see what's come, what's still to come, and what could breed a blood feud between Lys's house and the son of Polybus? I know of nothing. Crayon comes in. And he says, um, I hear Oedipus. Yes. I have a question about Tiresias. Isn't the same like prophet that sort of has this Hercules and like he has the soul he said? Ooh, that's a good question. I haven't watched the movie, but I'm not I'm not like hundred percent sure about it. Because he didn't really die. I honestly don't remember. It's been so long since I've read Greek mythology. I can't answer that. I'll, um, I'll check it. So, Cran comes out. He says, I hear Oedipus levels charges at me. So I, I had to come. Why? He wants to defend himself. Okay. So the leader, yeah, yeah, he did. But maybe it came out of him because of anger. He, maybe he didn't really mean it. He says, uh, but he made it in public? That is, he was on CNN, right? <laughs> or TNN, Thieves National News or something. I put the prophet up? Yeah, that's what he said. But I don't know what his intent was. Well, usually you judge someone's intent by what they say. Okay. Was his glance steady? His mind right when the charge was brought against me? That is, his eyes weren't rolling in his head. He wasn't, you know, frothing at the mouth like a crazy man. Notice now the leader's what? 
being a weasel. He's trying not to take a stand. He doesn't want to get between. How did Hamlet put it? When low-born people get between two opposing powers. The leader doesn't want to get between these opposing powers. So Oedipus comes out. You, because he sees crayon. You have your, you're showing your face before the palace gates, plotting to kill me? Tell me, what did you take me for? Coward or fool? Crayon. I'm not finishing Oedipus' speech because he just keeps going. Done yet? Are you quite finished? Now it's your turn to listen. All right? Now keep in mind, is Crayon Oedipus's equal in terms of age? No, he's not. All right? He's Oedipus's uncle. And what would his other relationship be? Brother-in-law, brother yeah, thank you. Uh, my mind doesn't. Okay. So they banter back and forth and pick up with 624. Crayon says, okay, Elias, what, what did Elias, what are you talking about Elias for? He vanished, murdered in his tracks. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. And the prophet, was that his trade back then? Yep. Skilled as he is today, honored, and just as honored. Did he ever refer to it? No. But you investigated the murder. Uh -huh. Discovered nothing. But the great seer never accused me then. I, I don't know. And when I don't, I keep quiet. A little bit of advice there, you know, for audience. If you don't know anything, shut up. But the, he, you do know this. You tell it too. What? If I, know, I won't hold back. This. Two of you never got together, conspired against me. If that's what he said, well, you know best. So you're not going to convict me of murder, Oedipus says. Cram, you're married to my sister, right? No kind of question is that. It's a question of fact. You're married to my sister, yes or no? It's a simple question. I don't want to get just yes or no, sir. Answer the question. Almost like a courtroom scene. Uh, genuine discovery, duh. <laughs> no denying that. Okay. And you rule the land with her, right? Equal power? Yeah. She receives from me what she desires. That's what crayon means by equal power. Why? Women in Greek society especially in this kind of mythic Greek society, had no rights. They were not people, period, okay? And I'm the third, right? All of us are equals. That is, it's kind of a triumvirate. Oedipus, Tocasta, Crayon. You rule, she gets what she wants. He says, yeah, and it's there you show your strength. And what he means is, yeah, you're a dirty dog trader. How dare you? I mean, you got everything. Crayon's like, hold on. Let me get to the point. Not if you see things calmly, rationally. And what does he argue? I'm not going to go through the whole speech. What's his essential argument? Crayon, uh, Oedipus, look at it from my perspective. I have, essentially, all the perks that come with your power without what? Use our, our present system. Bingo. Without the responsibility. I have all the perks of being president without the responsibility to what? Send troops into war. In other words, I don't have that way in my, on my conscience. So what are the perks? White House? Yeah, I can live there. I do live there. What else? Air Force One? Marine One? All the other ones? <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of good perks. Without any of the headaches. <coughs> I don't have to deal with Congress. I don't have to deal with the media. 
get laid. Why would I want you dead? Why would I want your job? When I get all the fun associated with it. Okay? Leader. Pretty good argument. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But what else does he say? 676. You want proof? Go to Delphi yourself. That is, go to the oracle and have the oracle tell you yourself. He's essentially laying everything on the line here, right? Because what if Oedipus goes to the oracle and the oracle says, get Grant on Tiresias. You know, they're, they're working against you. So why does he tell Oedipus to do that? What does Crayon know that Oedipus doesn't? He's telling the truth. Okay? That's why the leader says, that's pretty good advice. Oedipus, when my enemy moves against me quickly, plots in secret, I must move quickly too. I must react. Okay? Crayon, okay, so what do you want? You want me banished? No, I want you dead. Wow, that's just right out there and in the open, isn't it? Why? So you I think you're insane, Crayon says. Why? Why insane? How is Oedipus acting? Is he acting? Is he talking? Is he thinking? Logically? Rationally? No. So they continue talking, and Jocasta comes out. Or Yocasta comes out. And she's like, what are you guys arguing about? Have you no sense? Poor misguided men such shouting. Get back in the palace. Notice she says that to Oedipus. Into the palace. Now. Talking like what? <laughs> yeah, like mom. Crayon, you go home. He says, your husband... And they talk a little bit. And she says, Oedipus, believe it. Honor the solemn oath. He, Crayon, swears to heaven. Do it for me, for the sake of all your people. The chorus chants, believe it, believe it, you know. So, Oedipus, Crayon, and the chorus go back and forth. Chorus draws away. And Yocasta finally asks him, line 7, 68 or so. For the love of God, Oedipus, tell me, what is it? That's what's bothering you. Why this rage? He says, well, I'll tell you, I respect you, Yocasta, but not these you know, points to the chorus. Come on, what's the problem? He says, I murdered Linus. Now, notice in this, in this passage, it's almost like, <laughs> he says, I murdered Linus, like a little kid talking to his mother about why he got in a fight. How does he know? Some secret knowledge or hearsay? Well, he sent crayon, or he sent his prophet. A prophet? Okay, then don't, you don't need to worry about that. Why does she say you don't need to worry about what a prophet says? Let me tell you about my experience with prophets, Oedipus. Lias and I heard from a prophet when I was pregnant, she says, that doom would strike, 787, him down at the hands of his son, our son, to be born of our own flesh and blood. But Lias, as the report goes, was killed by strangers, thieves, at a place where three roads meet. My son, he wasn't three days old, the boy's father fastened his ankles, had a henchman fling him away on a barren, trackless mountain. So you see, prophecy, schmophecy doesn't mean anything. Lias was supposed to be killed by his own son. A band of thieves. Thieves killed him at a crossroads. And our son was cast, thrown away when he's three days old on a mountain. Oedipus, strange hearing you just now. My mind wandered, my thoughts racing back and forth. Why? This is the first little teeny tiny inkling. This is 
the doorway opening to his darkened, blind mind and letting in just a sliver of light. It's the beginning of his recognition. Right? What? what? what, what what's the problem? You said lives was cut down in a place where three roads meet. Yep, that's what we heard. Where? He wants to know, what are the three roads? A um, place called Focus, where two branching roads, one from Dahlia, one from Delphi, come together, crossroads. When? How long ago? Um, Harold's no sooner reported lies dead than, you know, well, you showed up. What have you planned to do to me? That's not Oedipus taking full responsibility. But that doorway is opening up a little bit more and showing a little bit more light. Why? Well, what did Oedipus do just before he showed up at Thebes? He killed a dude where? At that specific crossroad. What haunts you? He goes, no. Oh, Describe Lias. Because maybe if Lias didn't look like the guy I killed, then I'm fine. I killed somebody else, you know. Had he reached his prime? Well, he was swarthy. Well, he is Greek. That means he's got a dark complexion, you know. Gray had just begun to streak his temples. 30s, 40s. Bill you know, kind of looked like you, in fact. I've called down a dreadful curse upon myself. I simply didn't know. That, I think, is the hallmark of every great tragedy. Whether you're talking ancient Greek, ancient Roman, Shakespearean tragedy. My kind of definition of a tragedy is when the tragic hero acts or has to make a decision but doesn't have all the information he or she needs to act or make a decision. He or she is often acting blindly. Okay? She's like, what's, what's wrong? He goes, not, not yet, not yet. I have a terrible fear the blind seer can see. I'll know more in a moment. More. Whatever, tell me. Did he go with a lighter, heavy escort? Several men at arms? Like a lord, a king? Well, yeah, there were five in the party. I now I can see it all clear as day. Why? Because Oedipus remembers exactly how many men there were with the man that he killed. Because he, he killed all but one of them. Who told you all this? Servant who reached home, lone survivor. Is he here? Is he in the palace somewhere? No, he got home as soon as he saw you on the throne. He wanted to skip town. Can we bring him back? Yeah. Why? Eh, I'm not going to tell you yet. Okay. So then Oedipus gives us a little more necessary exposition. A little more background. He tells us my father was Polybus, king of Corinth. My mother, a Dorian, Merope. I was the old prince of the realm. Till one night at a party, some drunk said too much. Said, I'm not my father's son. Okay. Oedipus didn't understand that to mean I was adopted. He understood that to mean I was a bastard. Somebody else slept with my mother. So I went to mom and dad. They said, Psh, don't worry about it. Not good enough. So I went to the oracle at Delphi. And the god Apollo spurred me, sent me away, denied the facts I came for. But before he did, he said, you are fated to couple with your mother. You will bring a breed of children into the light no man can bear to see. You will kill your father, the one who gave you life. Sound like anything we heard before? Pretty close to the same prophecy Yocasta received. So I heard all that and ran. Why does he run? Okay, notice. Who does this prophecy come from? The God. 
right? Do gods lie? Well, in Greek mythology, yeah, they do. <laughs> They're not necessarily known as truth tellers, okay? Here might be helpful to think of this. In the Greek system, you have fate, the gods, and us. Okay? We're down here on Earth. The gods are outside Earth, but they can come down to Earth, you know, beyond Olympus and stuff. But fate is behind the gods. It's not quite an accurate portrayal. It might be better put like this. Because fate doesn't control the gods, okay? But the gods can't change fate. The gods can see fate. They can see what will happen in the future, okay? So, why does Oedipus run away from home? What does he obviously not want to do? And sleep with his mother. Freud and Betty, that's we'll get to that in a moment. What else is he therefore trying to do? He's trying to escape fate. That's the big, the big picture theme this play is about. Can you escape fate or your destiny? Or the thing that, according to Greek thought, the thing that when you are born, that is inside you from the beginning that tells you what you must do slash be in your life. Just like an acorn has within it that which tells the acorn to grow up to be a mighty oak. Okay? Each of us has, according to this thought process or this idea, we have a genius. That is our own genius. And this thing determines what we should be, not should be male, female, black, white, etc., but what our, to use a modern kind of term, calling is in life. Okay? Oedipus is trying to escape this. So he says, I fled. And as I fled, I came to that very spot you described, and I, what? I killed a man. I saw a herald, brace of colts. Guy wouldn't cross over, so I strike him in anger. anger. The old man watching me comes up along his heels, tries to smack me on the head. I paid him back with interest. If there is any blood tie, like 899, between Laius and the stranger, what man alive more miserable than I? More hated by the gods. I am the man. No alien, no citizen welcomes to his house. Law forbids it, not a word to me in public. What is he forgetting here? What was the prophecy Laius and Yocasa received? Elias would be killed by his son. Oedipus doesn't know at this point he's Elias' son. He just thinks, I killed Elias. Well, because Jocasta said, don't worry about prophecy, you know, because Elias is supposed to be killed by his son. Oedipus doesn't then make the connection. Oh, I am Elias' son, and you are, ew! He doesn't go there yet. 9-10. Wasn't I born for torment? Look me in the eyes. I am abomination, heart and soul. I must be exiled, even in exile. Never see my parents, never sit on native earth again. My parents whom? He's thinking Polybus and Merope. Okay. Leader. This is weighty stuff. So, bring the shepherd in. The one who saw Elias killed, if 929, it turns out his story matches yours, I've escaped the worst. How? If his story matches yours, what did she say? He was killed by 
thieves, plural. If he says a band of thieves came and killed Lias, then it wasn't me because I'm not a band of thieves. Right? She says, it, it can't be you. 943. He could never make the murder of Lias truly fit the prophecy. That is, even if he changes his story. Why? Apollo was explicit. My son was doomed to kill my husband. My son. He didn't have a chance. They destroyed him first. Really? How? Did she have an abortion? They knew how to do abortions. They didn't. So, if a prophecy comes to you and says, that thing in your belly is going to kill your husband and marry you, and you think, well, I should probably get rid of it. Maybe that's the time. And I'm not in support of abortion, so just, you know, let that out there. Okay, so you're against abortion, so you're not going to do that. Then what do you do? What do you do as soon as the baby's born? <laughs> you know, throttle it. They didn't do that, did they? Nope. Three days after the baby's born, what do they do? Hand him off to a shepherd slash herdsman. Take him off to Mount Kithneron to leave him there on the mountainsides to die. Okay? So, Chorus gets another speech. And Yurkoska comes out from the palace. She wants to pray, and a messenger comes in. Where is the messenger coming from? Corinth. Why? The messenger has important news to bring to Oedipus. What's the news? Your father's dead. Polybus is dead. She's like, what? Really? Bottom of page 1467. I'm not telling the truth, Drake. Right? Get him out here. So they bring Oedipus out. I know we've only got a few seconds. And so she says to Oedipus, Why 1054? Look to the prophet's heart, the fires of the future. Why scan the birds? See, prophecy is meaningless. Your father is dead. We'll stop there. Okay, we'll finish this on Friday. We'll have the exam on Monday. Monday. <clears throat>